didn't start out as the fully firm, formed First Lady who stands before you today. No, no, I had my share of bumps along the way. But as potentially the first African American First Lady, I was also the focus of another set of questions and speculations, conversations sometimes rooted in the fears and misperceptions of others. Was I too loud or too angry or too emasculating? Right, all because she's African American. Oh, woe is her. Uh, welcome to Give Me Five, ladies and gentlemen. Michelle Obama at Tuskegee University on Saturday giving the commencement address. Um, yeah, it had nothing to do with her radical views and her radical outbursts just because she was black. Poor Michelle Obama. Uh, here's more. But eventually, I realized that if I wanted to keep my sanity and not let others define me, there was only one thing I could do, and that was to have faith in God's plan for me. Look, I love our daughters more than anything in the world, more than life itself. And while that may not be the first thing that some folks want to hear from an Ivy League educated lawyer, it is truly who I am. So for me, being mom in chief is and always will be job number one. All right, glad to hear that. And it's because of her love for her children that she has stuck her nose into the plates of children all over America. That's right, here we go. So I took on issues that were personal to me. Issues like helping families raise healthier kids, honoring the incredible military families that I've met out on the campaign trail, inspiring our young people to value their education and finish college. So yeah, I planted a garden and hula hooped on the White House lawn with kids. I did some mom dancing on TV. I celebrated military kids with Kermit the Frog. I asked folks across the country to wear their alma mater's t-shirts for college signing day. Could we have a contest between her and her husband? How many times they say I? Who says I the most? I, 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 me, 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 my, my, my. I mean, my goodness. This is a commencement address. They know who you are. I mean, I didn't hear the whole address, but if we had counted, I would have run out of fingers and toes a long time ago. Here's one more. And at the end of the day, by staying true to the me I've always known, I found that this journey has been incredibly freeing. Because no matter what happened, I had the peace of mind of knowing that all of the chatter, the name calling, the doubting, all of it was just noise. It did not define me. It didn't change who I was. And most importantly, it couldn't hold me back. There were six in that, that cut. Six me and me and me and I. This is the Michelle Obama life story. Maybe this was a little glimpse of her campaign speech. Now, you want to know why you were picked on if you were picked on? You want to know why you were put under scrutiny by some? Not by many, but by some, like me? Well, it was for statements like this. But what we've learned over this year is that hope is making a comeback. It is making a comeback, and let me tell you something. For the first time in my adult lifetime, I'm really proud of my country. And not just because Barack has done well, but because I think people are hungry for change. For the first time in her adult life, she was proud of her country. Think that's normal? Here's more. I have been desperate to see our country moving in that direction and just not feeling so alone in my frustration and disappointment. I've seen people who are hungry to be unified around some basic common issues, and it's made me proud. All right. Here's New Yorker magazine, March 10th, 08, about Michelle Obama. Obama begins with a broad assessment of life in America in 08, and life is not good. We're a divided country. We're a country that is just downright mean. We are guided by fear. You see the rest of it there. You think that might be a reason why some people like me took you to task, Mrs. Obama? You had no use for this country. None.